What? Good. My nuggies. <laughs> Today we are back with another video. This one is a viewer suggested and they wanted to know five things I wish I knew before keeping reptiles. For those of you that don't know me, hi, my name's Dakota. I own DBCB Exotics. I've been keeping reptiles for quite a long time. If you're also trying to figure out what the hell the Chicken Nuggy Gang is, you can find out today by just going down there and hitting, hitting that subscribe button. That's all you gotta do, and then you'll find out. What will you find out? That's up to you to find out. So, let's dive in, let's get into it. Five things I wish I knew before keeping reptiles. Roll the intro. And kicking off this list, we are going to be going over number five, Facebook groups are trash. No, oh, this might surprise some of you boys and girls figuring out that I used to heavily rely on Facebook groups for my reptile information. I know, I know. Crazy, right? Me? Like Facebook groups? What happened, Dakota? Who? Why? What, what changed? Why do you hate him now? Why? Why? It started as a cute bearded dragon picture, but then... Oh my god, are you trying to kill him off of the substrate before you kill him? Animal abuser! You are a animal abuser! I, I think it's actually a pretty nice setup. All the anger and hate engulfed him until all Mr. Burke knew was pain. Well... That was a thing. Now take my advice, boys and girls. Don't trust everything you read on Facebook groups. Facebook groups are a dumpster fire in of itself. A ask anyone that's been around in this hobby long enough, they'll tell you Facebook groups are trash. They are filled with, I, I won't say there is no good information. I've had some help on Facebook groups in the past, some things that have uh, really helped me out getting into the keeping where I am today, but it, 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 has, it is nothing. The, the information I've learned is nothing compared to sheer, sheer anger and arrogance, hatred, pain. I'll tell you man, Facebook groups are, that is a, uh, that, I, I don't really, <laughs> Facebook groups are just not a happy place. They're not a place you wanna go to if you're a, you're a happy-go-lucky animal keeper because you will, you'll be struck down so hard, so fucking hard. Unbully so much might and force from Facebook groups because little Timmy over here thinks that he, since he's kept his his bearded dragon for six weeks and watched one YouTube video, not mine, mine's a good one, but another YouTube video, he thinks I know everything there is to know about bearded dragons and etc. reptiles. You're bad. Fuck Facebook groups. <laughs> Honestly, just do the research for yourself. Talk to some experienced breeders. I, I, actually, if you have any questions on your reptile, talk to the breeder that you purchased your reptile from. That is a great way to get the information because you know it's in someone that's been doing this for at the very least a couple of years because it takes that long to grow animals out, breed them, get eggs, get babies. The whole breeding process takes a bit. So obviously that guy at least knows a thing or two at the very most minimum. Just ask them. Don't ask Facebook groups, please. I'm only telling you this because life can do terrible things. And by life, I mean Facebook groups. And then moving on into tip number four, what you're gonna be talking about the fact is you need to feed the bugs that you feed your lizards. And that's just strange. Now I know what you guys are thinking, Dakota, you don't have to do that. You just get them from the pet store and then feed them right away. Problem solved. What are you talking about feeding bugs? I haven't fed bugs. Wait, am I, D Dakota, am I supposed to feed the bugs? Oh my god. I, I, I didn't. I did not. Please, Dakota, continue articulating us with this advanced knowledge of feeding bugs to feed reptiles because I, I had no idea. 
Yes, viewer, thank you for stop talking so I can get back into the video. Yes, gut loading your insect feeders is a pretty vital part to feeding your reptile. Now, here's the thing about it. It is not, I wouldn't say it's like, and you know what, no, I changed my mind. It's a necessity. Here's the thing. If you're feeding something that, if obviously coming from a pet store, they don't feed them. I worked at multiple pet stores, a lot of pet stores. We never fed the crickets. They got like, I mean, we're talking 2,000 crickets got one little slice of a mini potato. That's, that's what they got. Those crickets are starving. And that means with a starving animal, it's going to have lower nutritional value than ones that do. That's why I always recommend for you to gut load your insects at least 24 hours before feeding that, an that insect to your lizard. You can gut load on a variety of different meal options and stuff like that. I have a Dubia Roach care guy, which pretty much goes over all the gut loading things that I do for them, but it really works for any reptile. So, or insect, shit. Don't gut load your, your lizard. Well, I guess gut load on the things that you gut loaded. It's like gut loaded inception. Moving on. All right, we, we gonna go, we're gonna keep going down with this list with number three. No, uh, no an actual exotic vet in your area. Jesus Christ, these are animals. You sometimes gotta take them. Now I know, somewhat counterintuitive to my previous statement saying that vets suck. Well, let's be honest, most exotic vets are not really exotic vets, they just say they are. Um, I've gone to multiple exotic vets. I, I've got, I went to a bird vet that didn't know what a crop was on a bird. For people that don't know what it is, it's their stomach. It's what would be a stomach. Obviously, bird digestive systems are different than human digestive system. It sits right here. I had a bird that plucks itself due to, you know, rescue situation, blah, blah, blah. And it was full because she just ate. And this bitch, this bitch was like, she's like, huh, I'm concerned about the swelling. I'm like, what did you just say? What did you, I, I just spent $75 just to get in here. What did you just say? Oh my God. Worst $75 I ever spent. Worst. That as it may. Um, as far as the average keeper goes, you're not gonna know all the medical stuff that you're gonna need to do for your reptiles in order to help them. If you have reptiles with different kind of tumors, uh, egg bounding, similar situations to egg bounding, I'm not gonna get into all the medical reasons. Um, you're gonna need to seek out an experienced exotic vet. Don't take it to a vet that doesn't know what they are doing because they'll most likely kill your reptile. And then they'll tell you that you're doing it wrong by keeping your bearded dragon on loose substrate. And we recommend reptile carpet. I don't know why people wonder why I don't like exotic vets. It's because they recommend shit like reptile carpet and then I'm supposed to take you seriously. Really? Really? Yes, before you get your reptile, find out where your experienced exotic vet is. I don't wanna hear, I wanna hear the BS excuses like on the Facebook group. The nearest vet is two hours away. Bitch, drive two hours then. What, what's the problem? What's the holdup? I don't have a car. How'd you get a reptile and you don't have a car? There's a multiple reason. People are in their own scenarios. I'm not trying to judge anyone. All I'm saying is to order to do what's best for your reptile, you need to circle out when there's a medical emergency where to take that animal and not be caught off guard when your reptile has something wrong with it that needs to be fixed, but you have no idea what to do or where to go. Please, for the love of God, do not go on Facebook groups and ask what the, what you should do with them. Because, dear God, if you can't, you can't trust Facebook groups with husbandry advice, for the love of God, please, please do not ask them for advice on medical situations. Oh my God. All right, we almost done with this list, boys and girls. Now we are heading into number two. You don't have to breed reptiles just because you keep them. Well, take my other hand down as well. Through the years of reptile groups that I believe happened when Facebook groups existed. Oh, you thought I was done roasting Facebook groups? I haven't even fucking begun. Anyway. There seems to be this elitist persona of things where like, if you're not a reptile breeder, then you're not as good as a reptile keeper. Uh, it, it seems like there's the keeper and then like breeders are up there. Like you're better in the reptile hobby if you're a breeder. Um, that's not really the case. I mean, I know tons of people that breed and that really, really shouldn't. There's no, I, I don't know, man. Why, why are you doing it? Is it because you, you wanted to look better in the reptile hobby? Is that, is that what's going on? The thought, the, the trail thought ends there, I couldn't finish it. Listen, if you love these reptiles and you really enjoy keeping them, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to breed them. We have a huge, ginormous surplus of breeders in specific categories. Leopard geckos, corn snakes, ball pythons, crested geckos, dear lord, crested geckos, dear lord, crested geckos. <laughs> Probably ball pythons too, more, ball, more likely ball pythons, but at the same time, crested geckos. 
Breeding reptiles is not as easy as putting one reptile with another and then boom, you get eggs. Unless you're breeding crested geckos, then it, it kind of works out that way. But that is not just all that happens. There are a huge amount of complications that can occur, a huge amount of complications that can happen with the baby, huge complications happening with the eggs. There is a lot of cons to breeding reptiles. And it's something that if you don't have the funds to make sure that if your female gets egg bound, she has a way to go to the vet. That's a very expensive surgery. If some one of these babies are happening, what's gonna happen? If you have a baby with a deformity, are you gonna cull it? Or you're gonna try to make it live. There are a bunch of different pros and cons to breeding reptiles and I don't know I just feel like it, it shouldn't be this thing that's like taken so lightly where like everyone can breed reptiles. It's just it's getting to a point where it's almost like backyard puppy breeding. That's not cool. Breeding puppies in backyards that's not cool. I don't know. I, last last list last one on the list all right heading down this list we are going to be going over number one the top tip i wish i learned before keeping reptiles it's addictive G get ready to own a lot of reptiles reptiles are like potato chips boys and girls you either you either have one you have two or you have 30. there is literally no in between I don't know what it is about reptiles, man, because it's not like, I think it's just exotic pets in general. It's not something like, you know, if you either have one dog or two dogs or 30 dogs. No, there's no one that has 30 dogs. Dear Lord, do you, do you have, do you have 30 dogs? Don't, don't tell, 30 dogs? Why am I judging? I own 80 reptiles. What am I doing? That's hypocritical. I'm so sorry. Uh, please accept my apology. You own 30 dogs if you want to. Oh, care for him properly. By, no, no, I'm not judging. No, of course, if you own 30 dogs, you, you must know what you're doing. Right? Yeah? Okay. I don't know, man. There's just something about it that makes reptiles really fun. It, it's like Pokemon. You just gotta, you gotta catch them all, and I gotta, I gotta own them all. So I'm on my mission to own every single reptile that has ever existed. Only 1,000 animals, more animals to go. I think that's pretty much it. That's going to wrap up this dumpster fire of a list. Um, do you guys want one more tip? Don't go on Facebook. <laughs> Alright boys and girls, there you go. Top five things I wish I knew before I started keeping reptiles. So, if you liked the video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my animals or my breeding products, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, DBCB Exotics. We're also on TikTok. Not for much longer because TikTok I heard is being banned on Sunday, so... I almost got a million views on this video, now they're banning me. I had like 10,000 followers, great. Good stuff, US government, thanks. As soon as I started getting big on, on TikTok, they're like, nah, fuck them. <laughs> if you want to check out some cool merch like these designs right here, you can see them at teespring.com right down there in the description where we also have Patreon, patreon.com slash dbcbexotics, where you get premium content like up-to-date information on all my brain projects. Of course, I have a bunch of stuff going on around here. Get to see new animals and new projects that I have going on before anyone else gets to see them. Even first dibs on the animals I produce. All sounds pretty good, right? All sounds like a great nifty thing, as low as $1 a month, different tiers, different folks. We're wrapping it up today. Yes, I wore the same outfit that I did last video. I'm recording two videos in a row, back to back. That's what happened. We'll see you all tomorrow.